Some quick plant updates for you guys. Kina is almost done opening her new leaf. Oh, look at it. It's such a beautiful emerald color. I really, really am in love with this Monstera. She's growing so well. If you guys remember when I brought her back home from Missouri, like, wow, almost a year ago now. I can't believe it's been that long. She has grown a ton. Look at this. She really loves being over by the window. When it's not as sunny, I actually put her over next to one of my grow lights, but I've been thinking about putting a new grow light here. I'm going to get rid of this because this shelving unit falls all of the time and I don't want to risk any of my plants falling again. <laughs> I think that's what hurt my poor little orchid. But I've been thinking about getting a really special grow light that could hang kind of either from the ceiling or the side of the wall and encourage all of these guys to grow happily and some shelves so that I could grow all sorts of other plants over here too, especially in the winter so that could just like really cheer me up and kind of be a fun experiment. But Kina is doing quite well. I can't wait to see this leaf unfurl. That's going to be really fun. I hear it unfurling. It sounds like somebody is flipping the pages of a book now and then in the silence of my office. And it makes me look up every time like, what's going on? So she's doing great. Very happy about that. And the string of pearls is doing great too. Look at all of these new little babies. I'm making sure to rotate it so that everything gets enough light and it seems super duper happy. And my string of turtles has totally perked up inside of its little container. And then we have crystals growing in our experiment. I need to do more streaming so I can share those with everybody and like everybody too. And on this side of the room, check it out we have two two of our passion flowers that i think are getting ready to bloom and my room is filling with the scent of these guys blooming i actually realized that they were probably blooming because i was like what on earth it smells like i have a fresh bouquet of flowers just opened and sitting next to me it smells like i just got like brand new flowers delivered and they're in my office just filling the air with their scent and i looked down and these two were closed this morning and they're already opening and with these passion flowers the blooms only last for a day so they bloom really really fast i might have to see if i can do a time lapse sometimes because that would be just beautiful to be able to do like a fun time lapse with these so they're doing great i still need to get more dirt for their pot but they seem to be doing just fine with the sunlight on during the night uh, we leave it off during the day right now because otherwise the room gets too hot in the summer but they're doing fine with that and i move them over by the window now and then just to give them a little extra extra boost during the day. So can't wait to show you guys those too. I just finished recording so much of our Warrior Cats clan generator challenge because I have discovered more random generators. <laughs> I love random generators. I love organic storytelling with random generators because it just brings everything to life for me. And I have been having just the time of my life going ahead and uh, setting up a whole bunch of custom random generators on this website called Perchance, which I discovered this morning. And it has like weighted options so that you can make certain things far more likely to happen or certain things super rare to happen, which is fantastic and not something that a lot of the free online random generators, uh, random generator like building sites usually have. And it's really easy to use. I had a lot of coding background in high school back when you needed it to like build websites and make your own pages and modify your Neopets and MySpace way back then. <laughs> But it's really easy to use, even with just a tiny dash of coding knowledge, because uh, it's basically fill in the blank. Great tutorial. And I made a medicine cat uh, wound generator. So if the cats pop into the medicine cat den while I'm recording, we can say, oh no, did something happen to them? And randomly roll to see uh, if like they took an injury somehow or got sick somehow. And I also made a generator for cats to find medicine herbs that we can add to the herb pile, uh, depending on like if I had enough extra cats who didn't need to gather fresh kill and could go out and they could gather some extra herbs using the random generator instead. And it has been so much fun. So I've already recorded like two hours worth of videos. I need to stop to do some of my, my chores and my exercising and eat lunch. Um, but if I start dabbling in more of these random generators 
it's gonna be so fun because these ones are so easy to use and you can make so many of them to save to your account that I am absolutely going to be expanding this into my sims into some of our other series where a dash of randomness like that would just bring so much to life for me like our warrior or excuse me our wolf quest would be so much more fun for me if I could add that little bit of extra randomness now and then Wow, yeah, and think of all the sims generators. I could actually say if a sim like loses some skill points in something or if they need to contact a family member and I could customize the generator to a specific sim. So I could like make a generator for Fern that says that she needs to like get in contact with one of her her like siblings for instance. Or I could make a generator for um for like Oh gosh. Oh man. I mean, I'm trying to think for Pine that could say that he needs to gain a new skill or else he's going to lose like two or three skills and something else. And I could put in uh, the skills that he has really high points in to the values so that it actually impacts the skill that he currently has. Um, so anyway, I'm random. I'm rambling now and I need to eat. You can tell I'm really tired and hungry because I've just been putting so much effort into this Warrior Cats recording. But I really feel like random generators can rewrite everything when it comes to being able to make progression in stories. And it's my strength. And I can't tell you guys how happy I am that the Warrior Cat series is doing so well, in huge part thanks to these random generators. And actually, it reminds me so much of Warrior Cat's Untold Tales, because the reason I think that our Untold Tales series did so well is because I used random generators to build the stories. So this is kind of like a step up from Untold Tales, a step below like Cat Tales, um, and definitely still like the best random generators to use would be in our Sims 3 series. And it just hit me. Oh, oh, I finally have the thing that could let me use the proper random generators to make fun things happen in our Sims 3 series. Oh, that just blew my mind. I need more food before I can think about this any further. <laughs> food! <laughs> Lunch is an amazing little bento that I actually made last night. This is roasted vegetables with some brown rice and Chips' is amazing homemade hummus. It is the best hummus. He is just a master. I love when he'll whip up some fresh chickpea sauce, as he's been calling it lately. Uh, some grapes, and I'm going to chow down on this while editing some in slates for editing our videos that I just made on the Warrior Cat stuff, while reading some wandering in while also having just realized that nothing that I have been doing has anything to do with tackling the summer goals that I want to finish. Whoops. That is so cool. Look at the cats! Yay! What is going on with somebody's tail over here? Oh my word. Speckle Flood, what happened to your tail? <laughs> All right. Well, there we go, guys. So I haven't been working. Oh, and Dark Forest stuff. Oh, dear. I haven't been working with star clam prompts yet, but that is on my list of like plots to consider doing. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> but for now, let's go ahead and see if we're going to have any cats other than Troutbird in the Medicine Cat Den. They are visiting, bitten by a venomous animal. They need six juniper berries to treat their wound. <gasps> That's really serious! That's like death if we don't have that happen! But literally everybody in the clan is thinking about kits, which is just so funny. And what did they find? They found no herbs, but enough fresh moss to help. Okay, we're literally like lining the, the fresh kill pile with extra food, with extra moss. But I think Ash Shadow is probably throwing up his paws in the medicine cat den like, what did I tell you? Cobwebs! Cobwebs! It, how can you not catch a cobweb? So let's try sending out more of the cats. So I wonder what on earth they got into. I imagine that that Volhart... Uh, had a lot to say about that and Blue Nettle was a little embarrassed to be scolded by the older, more experienced queen. So we're just kind of going to note that there's a little bit of tension going on in the nursery. Yeah, Speckle Flood doesn't have an apprentice. We'll go out. Thunderpath. Oh, Speckle Flood, please be careful.
All right, so now it is much later in the evening. I'm actually kind of amazed that I'm letting it get so late and I still wanna work on these warrior cat generators, but I'm having so much fun. All I have been able to think about today is like all of the cool ways that we could make more random generators. So maybe like the Star Clan cats can send down some signs to the cats and we could say like, oh, this kit wants to become a medicine cat or, um, oh, maybe we're going to have more dogs raid or maybe there's going to be a dangerous rogue who is lurking and might lure away some of the cats. So there's all sorts of fun ways we can take this very simple but beautiful fan game and just completely modify it thanks to the simple tools that it has to add and remove cats and I'm just so tickled and our patrons are so sweet so many of our patrons are actually members of the same discord community that is building this game and so they have shown me how I can go in and edit the save files so we could really customize the results on all of the 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 things that are happening in our story here and so once again a tiny fan-made warrior cat game is becoming one of my favorite obsessions to work on right now and then people have been so sweet in the comments and so sweet in our patreon discord in particular telling me how much like orbit orbit for instance telling me how much they love that blend of the way i can bring a lot of role play into simple games that are almost so simple they're practically just text-based and I have to admit that made me so happy. <laughs> that made me really happy because that's kind of my strength is, is randomness. One of our wonderful community members, Ivy, who, oh, I hope you, if you see this, Ivy, hi, I hope your new baby is doing well. <laughs> but Ivy has been around for a long time. And one time she asked me how, in one of her live streams or something like that, I think, that I popped into, how do I make it so that there's so many stories? How do I plan all the stories in my Sims games? And I remember being surprised because I was like, I don't. <laughs> Very rarely I will try to have like a plot point in plan for our Sims and almost never am I able to make it happen because I love just the randomness and the organic stories that emerge from seeing somebody have a whim or from seeing like a different townie walk by. Those kinds of tiny little things for some reason have always just been connected like an intricate ecosystem cobweb in my head around the characters that we have, particularly in our Sims or other roleplay based stories like the Warrior Cat stories, uh, Untold Tales, the Clan Generator game, Wilder Myth. Oh, I love Wilder Myth. I hope we can have another arc of it this fall. Mm, I love it so much. But I'm just really tickled because when I say those things are my strength, it's it's taken me years to have the confidence and also the honesty to say that's what I love the most. If you go all the way back to the beginning of our channel, that kind of like almost solo D&D style roleplay where just random things happen, random generators, dice are rolled. I put dice into like everything, our wolf quest stories, our warrior cat stories. I think I've used them in zoo crafting. Uh, maybe I would do more zoo crafting if I used dice in them. <laughs> But that kind of gameplay has always been my strength, where you just kind of give me a pile of prompts and I'll sit down and make a story. I loved Mad Libs as a kid. And again, it's taken me years to say that with confidence. And it just feels really good, like, like a duck in water. It feels natural to be working on this story. And I really love that. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And I am just so deeply grateful to everybody who's enjoying them. So here I am. It is late, late in the evening. I need to actually finish eating my peach za, which you guys saw earlier. This is a delicious peach za. It has a chickpea base, so it's a chickpea crust, which is super easy to make, gluten-free, which is wonderful for your little IBS Siri here. Uh, and then we've got some vegan mozzarella. <laughs> so, oh, my dad just texted me. Hi, dad. <laughs> uh, but we have some vegan mozzarella mixed on top. Violife and Miyoko. Never touch Dea if you're going to get into the vegan cheeses. Uh, speaking of which, I actually need to do a little bit of reading on this book I got for Christmas. 
on how to make our own vegan cheeses. This is apparently the best cookbook that you could get if you want to make some real cultured vegan cheese, where it's cultured for like months at a time and it is delicious and amazing. It's award winning, it's complicated. <laughs> I actually have been putting myself to sleep taking notes on what we need to do to start making our own cheese. But you're, you might see your girl Siri here eating her own peach za. It's just peaches and mozzarella cheese and basil. Um, what else do I have in there? Oregano, salt and pepper. Really simple, so delicious on a bed of lettuce. Um, but I'm gonna finish that. I actually just finished listening to more of the Warrior Cats audiobooks. Guys, I have already cleaned my house from top to bottom listening to these audiobooks. And now I am having legitimately and honestly a health revolution for biking on my like indoor stationary exercise bike over there. You see it? You see it? It's hiding over in that corner. Probably oh, there's a lot of plants in here. Yeah, you can see it over there. I got that years ago to see if uh, that would actually help me while I was playing RimWorld <laughs> or other things on my laptop to just be able to keep my fitness up because I couldn't really go outside much in Michigan in the winter because it was just too dangerous with all the ice everywhere. Um, and now I have been playing Gardenscapes and Homescapes just for hours listening to the Warrior Cat books and I just finished another 80 minutes of biking 22 miles which is not super fast but it's still 22 miles of biking for over an hour. <laughs> Um, it was interrupted while I was like editing videos now and then, so that's why it took so long. But I have been doing that because of the Warrior Cat audiobooks. I have like revolutionized the, all of the kitchen cabinets, all of my like rooms, all of my closets in my house, just so that I have something to do while I listen to these audiobooks. And here I am having the time of my life working on the Warrior Cat's random generators tonight. And it's just awesome. It is just so much fun, and I'm hoping it's going to set a fantastic tone for transitioning from summer into autumn, because now that we've had all of the hype and the excitement and the big fancy, like, super, super anticipated games like Endling and Stray pop out for the summer, I am ready for cozy, I am ready for wholesome, I am ready for my farming games, I am ready for my Sims games, I am ready for my role playing games <laughs> to indulge in over the next autumn season before we have to get ready to jump back on the hype train of like the November December releases when I'm sure there's going to be a new Planet Zoo and a new who knows what for all of the other games that are coming out. Oh and Ooblitz is coming out on the 1st of September with full release, oh that's gonna be so fun. But yeah, there's a lot of things other than Warrior Cats I mean to work on. Um, I'm really proud I've been doing so much biking. I have to say that me personally, this is just for me, I don't ever want to imply like I know the best way to do health, but me personally, I feel so good. I'm sleeping so much better. I don't have stress headaches uh, from work or screens, ironically, if I bike enough. So clearly the endorphins are working. And I think maybe it's just I'm also super happy because I'm like listening to stories that I really like. <laughs> so it's just nice. It's a, a busy fun day. I'm going to work on coming up with more random generators. I'm going to really work with the patrons too because uh, people are so creative in there and people are being so creative in the comments too. And we already are starting to build a little bit of an archive of like fan art and I need to figure out the best place to go ahead and showcase that. And like Chase and uh, Chase and Tommy have already made fan art in our Patreon Discord. Some of it's starting to show up in our mail for Siri at gmail.com little fan mail thing, which is mostly spam now, but I do ch check it now and then just to see if anybody's put anything in there. Uh, oh, I guess we have the PO box now too. That's how I got this moss leaf thing, which is so beautiful, this moss leaf portrait. She goes up on my wall with my rose stone portrait and my cow plant, like everywhere we go. And Katie, who made me the beautiful little mementos of our trip to Hawaii. Oh, yeah, it's just a great night. And I guess this was not the vlog I anticipated making, but it is a snapshot of what a cha chaotic, beautiful, busy day in summer has been for me. And I guess I should call it a catotic day. <laughs> and I think it's a good example of a micro glimpse of what Siri's life is like. I lay out complicated 
complicated, intricate, nuanced, best laid plans early in the morning. I spent like two hours journaling and planning and going, yes, yes, indeed. If I want to try to accomplish my last of my summer goals, clearly I need to do X, Y, and Z today. And then I got completely and utterly distracted by just the sheer delight and joy and love I have for creating <laughs> our adventures and our storytelling. And so here we are ending the day about as far away from where the to-do list and the plans could have been. But at least I can do that now with a smile and just shrug and go, that's life. What else do you expect from me? <laughs> so if you ever wonder why it takes me so long to get anything done, um, basically if I see a squirrel of joy, I'm off. It, it, it's, it, it, I, I just, if there's anything that describes my brain, it's the Doug, the dog from Up being like squirrel, except all of my squirrels are just things that make me happy, which is most of life. <laughs> Speaking of which, I have one last cool thing to show you guys, and then I'm going to eat my peach saw and settle in to work more on some warrior cat ideas. So, you guys need to see this, this is cool. The passion flowers have bloomed! Look at this, you guys! Isn't this so cool? They're so beautiful and they're so complicated. I mean, look at how much flower action we have going on over here. I have not really studied botany in depth, so probably not all of these, like these may not be the petals, like these might be the petals. There's all sorts of fancy technical terms uh, once you get into the actual autonomy of flowers, but these guys were 100% closed this morning they were starting to look like they might bloom soon so i was starting to get kind of excited and telling chips oh boy i hope they like might open up and we might see them and not miss them because passion flower blossoms only last for one day so when i come back into my office tomorrow morning these may be gone by then they're so pretty they have these intricate white petals back here they have the little purple spikes and then it slowly but surely turns into this amazing I don't even know what to call this it almost reminds me of like a little carousel you know like a little carousel at a, a theme park and this is where a bunch of the pollen is so I imagine the powerful powerful smell there is such a gorgeous scent coming off of these guys it smells so beautiful it's kind of like a floral mint um, with a huge undertone of soap <laughs> It makes me wonder if soap is actually scented after passion flowers, but it is such a strong smell. I actually realized the flowers were blooming because I could, it smelled like somebody had just put like several fresh bouquets of flowers under my nose all of a sudden, just while I was sitting at my desk. And I was like, what? So I turned and looked because the smell was so strong and it was these two blooming, which made me so happy. But I imagine what happens is the animals who will come to, maybe there's some nectar like in here, where they'll start like fussing around trying to get it, they'll bump up against here. You can see the pollen's already on my finger and then they'll crawl out is my guess. And then I think these parts up here are actually where animals who have already brushed the pollen might brush up against it like so with hopefully pollen from a different flower so that you have some cross-pollination and then eventually create some seeds somehow so i have no idea if that's how it works um but it's just my guess based off of the structure of the flower and kind of just a tiny bit of what i know so it could be completely wrong but it's fun to come up with a hypothesis that i can check against actual data later this feels so weird <laughs> It feels kind of like sea urchin, like a soft version of little sea urchins. And look at the shades of purple, this dark, dark purple, then this white stripe. It creates that target that the animals, if they can see, might head straight in for that spot. Oh, it's just so cool. But these flower blossoms will only last the night and they might be gone by the morning. But the good news is this is very clearly spreading. <laughs> It's already put off several new buds over here. I have a new bud already on the end right there. We've got some new buds popping up over here. I need to get the dirt and I need to get my trellis built so that we can start guiding this thing up. I'm thinking we might actually 
potentially either remove or just work around this kind of trellis and make kind of like a pyramid shape. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I think if I make a pyramid shape with the trellis pieces, then I might be able to control where we're going with the plant action a little bit. So we'll have to see. <laughs> but all right, there you go, guys. What a fun day, chaotic, not what I thought it would be, but I had a great time and I can't wait to see what adventures or little surprises like these guys will show up tomorrow. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.